Hello everyone and welcome back. In today's off map build, I'm going to be showing you another bug Golden Gun build using the Connect Surge mod. However, instead of us using the Celestial Nighthawk to achieve our goals, we are going to be using Star Eater Scales for the 70% super damage it will provide. By applying times 3 Connect Surge mods for the 20% damage buff for Golden Gun and the Radiant Effect as well for more damage on top of what we currently have, you can easily take out a GM level champion or even ultra without the need of stunning them. Of course, you have to be very precise and accurate to pull this off, which isn't for everyone. So here's an easy endgame setup to use around the following that can be expanded on as you please. To start, you're going to want to have on your marks where getting precision kill will grant you and allies a boost in handling of low speed. Then you want to knock them down, which makes marksman and golden gun have increased duration. Although last time we covered Celestial Nighthawk one shot damage effect, Star Eaters with the following is going to push players to be a bit more cautious while collecting all the power and then powering up further. With the knock em down effect we can get damage distance while in our form which is ideal when using our following exotic with the super. Uh, looking into the fragments, Ember of Torches where powered melee attacks against combatants make you and nearby allies radiant. Ember Aperium, where solar weapon or ability final blows extend the duration of restoration and radiant effect. Ember of Searing, where defeating scorched targets grant melee energy and creates fire sprite. And Ember of Blistering, where defeating targets with solar ignition grant grenade energy. Our focus is to make sure we are getting super energy back no matter what we do, and the best way for this is to build everything into our grenades and get fire sprites back fast. With Ember of Searing and Blistering at play, each time we score the target with our abilities, we will trigger a ignition that will not only grant us grenade energy back, but also super energy as well from the grenade kill. We also have Star Eater's effect where collecting a small orb of power will grant us a 4.17% super energy back, and big ones give us a 10% on collection now. I would also highly recommend you add on the firebox grenade and knife trick to your setup so you can collect super energy faster and more efficiently compared to everything else we have. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into Discipline, Intellect and Resilience, just like last time, so not much in mods are being changed here. A Discipline stat at tier 7 to 9 will vary on what your armor stats can offer and how you want to go about using your grenades. With Ember Blistering and Fire Spikes are played, we can get back grenades fairly quickly as long as you're using our abilities to the fullest. Although on screen I have the Font of Focus mod which gives us a plus 30 towards our current discipline stat and a tier 9 stat as well which breaks the stat apart, this is more to do with me swapping the mod in and out for grenade kickstart instead of depending on the activity I'm playing on. Now if I'm playing something where I can get a lot of orbit power going, then I'll keep the stat how it is and just add on the kickstart mod instead. If I'm playing something more intensive though, then I'll reduce it down to tier 7 and use the focus mod instead. However you go about this will allow you the freedom to pick and choose how you want to go about using the stat to its fullest without needing to commit fully to just one mod. You may also want to add on the bomber and distribution mods for additional gains, but this is down to you. Resilience can stay at tier 8 to 10 if possible, as you want to have as much damage reduction as possible while using star eaters. Intellect can stay at tier 6 simply because that's a good spot to aim for in general, and the fast super regen is easy to garner with what we have. Although this can be left up to you, your strength stat can stay at tier 4 to 5, only because the knock em down aspect will allow us to get melee back faster upon final blows and radiant. You can also add on the momentum transfer mod as well, as that will easily get your melee energy back as well over time. As the build is pretty flexible to create, you're going to have a lot of room to build how you choose from here on out. Charged up is going to allow us to expand on how many charges we can carry for our characters by plus 1. Both Firepower and Connect Cypher mod will allow us to constantly create orbs of power through their affiliated areas. A time dilation will expand on time based mod by an extra 5 seconds. But the most important mods to have here is, of course, the Times 3 Connect Surge mods. These mods will enhance your golden gun damage by an extra 20% and make them hit even more harder. Now, lastly, the weapons being used will focus solely on inflicting max damage quickly. In our primary, we have the Hung Jury Adept with Connect Tremors a wonderful perk designed for inflicting max damage on anything it can touch. With the added damage it does against crits, it works out really well against bosses in life with continuous DPS and can also be enhanced further when surge mods are also being applied. 
Evolver weapons do work as well, but the following has proven to be more versatile when you want to do more damage quickly in a short time frame. Now if you don't have an adept hung jury, then this is not a problem, as the nameless midnight is now dropping and can be accessible with newer players simply from playing or just ranking up Zavala. After that, we then went with the Wendigo GL3 Adept, which can also be gotten from Zvala, but only if you unlock the base version of it first. The role I have will lean heavily into our prime weapon use to make sure we always trigger Cascade Point. But the idea here is to use our super first at max, and then use our primary to trigger Cascade Point, and then switch the weapon, dump a ton of ammo into the target all at once, rinse and repeat. With a simple setup, this will enhance our overall damage by an extra 100k against bosses and the like, as long as we don't miss our shots of course. If you don't have the following weapon, then the Ragnant grenade launcher from this season is also another weapon that can get the following roll and is also pretty easy to get, but you don't have long to get it. So the last time we covered this, I wanted to see just how well the Golden Gun bug, and its amazement around it, was like in the more harder content. From testing, we came to the conclusion that although the following is powerful enough to bring Celestial Nighthawk back into most endgame content, this still wasn't enough to make it a game changer, even if the damage change was noticeable. This also goes the same for the following build, but only slightly because of a number of changes now being applied. While Nighthawk is a one and done super, Star Eaters allows us to build upon what we currently have and enhance the damage threshold by a lot more to what Nighthawk can provide. One instance of this is trying the following build out against Volk and Nesrak in the raid. While I had issues with landing my shots on Nesrak, who has a habit of moving around a lot, against Volk with a diff player, I was getting a total of around 300k plus within just my super and then applying the extra damage via my heavy and primary meant I was reaching around a 400k plus total. This against a single bot is great, even if the damage was lowered without the div bubble involved. And using this against a champion for example, just on its own, can outright kill one in a single super, as long as they are stunned. However, just like Nighthawk, the bug isn't that amazing that many people seem to bang on about. It does well against bosses with easy to hit crit spots, and it will one shot things in Legend, Master, and above. But because of how precise you need to be with getting everything set up and making sure you don't miss, it's quite hard to perfect the build and want to use an endgame content at times. But personally, it does its job well so that you can use it as a backup DPS setup for certain encounters. Outside of that, the super will need more of a direct buff from Bungie to make it more viable and better for the foreseeable future. Overall, the bug is alright but it's not really that amazing, there's a lot more better out there. But what do you think? So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the near future then leave a like and sub button here. I will leave a dim link for the build below and if you want more stuff like this then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, I hope to see you again soon.